Hey, got something new going on here. I bet you haven't played this one. I dug this one. Like I said, I'm going down my list of games that nobody's really reviewed. The Kaiser's Battle, the German Offensive in March of 1918. Um, I've been watching Stephen Dolgis play the new one from GMT. And I went over to my list after I took down the Army of the Heartland and was looking through the World War I games, and this one had a big old blank spot next to it. I said, oh, well, great timing. So this one was out of the Strategy and Tactics magazine, number 83. And what's the date? Always fun trying to find the date on these things. It is... It looks like it's November to December 1980. I, now, what I did cool with this game was there's my map. My original map came in the magazine. <clears throat> I scanned it and blew it up, you know, because most maps are 22 by 34. So I blew it up to the standard size of 24 by 36, which made my hexes nice and big and roomy. Don't have to use tweezers. I uh, read the rules last night and finished them up today. Interesting concept. First game I've ever played that there's no combat results table. Very, very unique combat system. So you have, you roll a dice for the attacker. Now this is one of those games where if you're adjacent, you gotta attack unless you're in an entrenchment, a field work or a city, something like that, then you don't have to. But other than that, if you're adjacent, you gotta attack. So in this game here, you look at those strengths. Those are Stolson and Stormtroopers. Um, really, really effective for the first two game turns. <clears throat> Plus, it's fog for the first two game turns, so nobody gets any air or artillery except for the Germans. They get like this, they call it, um, uh, they call it drum fire barrage. And it's, I, I guess it's like prep. But it's really, really, well, it's, it's, if you hit, it's powerful. <clears throat> so these units, excuse me, I uh, see the numbers. Their first numbers, their combat strength, the little tiny numbers, morale, and the last numbers, movement. So here's how you do combat. So let's just say that, well, let's take it over here. And they're all adjacent. All right, so both of those Germans there, the ones in the light green with the orange Stalson troop markers, their combat strengths together are 60. And they're attacking, I think that's two, th there was a couple, there were four units in there, and they had like eight points, eight strength points. And the best morale in there was a three. So what you do is you take those strength numbers, you roll a dice, and then you add any modifiers according to terrain and weather and stuff like that. And you take that dice roll and you multiply it by their strength. And you do it from both sides. Then you take the defender's or the attacker's strength and you divide it by the defender's. Uh, they call it the quotient after you multiply it by that die roll modifier. So... Let's say that those two 30s there are 60 points and they rolled a two for their die roll. So, you, and you know, you, you, didn't say, you didn't add anything. So let's say, so 60 times two would be 120. And then let's say the six points of British that are in those square, that hex right there, they rolled a two. So they would be six times two is 12. So you'd have 120 divided by 12, which comes out to 10. Then you take that number and you look at the highest morale in the hex, which is a three. So you would do 10 minus three, and since the number's greater for the attacker, that means it was a successful attack. So 10 minus three is seven. That hex would have to lose seven steps, which means that both of those units would be wiped out. Seems a little off the wall, doesn't it? Now I've only played the first two turns. where So that's where, from what I understand, all the power is in the first German move. So. They, all, they started along these trench lines over here. And you can see that I've got Germans that moved all the way out here and all the way up there. And they're breaking through. So they're kicking allied butt at the start. Um, and they're blowing holes in the line. But, of course, the big units are coming on for the Brits. Um, I've also got to look up, the, there's a stormtrooper rule that uh, this, this special stuff is for turns one and two. So now I got to see what, uh, if there's, there's a breakdown phase and I got to see if they have to break down now after they've done this. Uh, I'm not moving as fast over here, but it's okay because these are just regular, uh, German infantry. All right. Um, 
they broke through the entrenches over here, but they're getting ready to run into a 10. And most of these second line German units, they were not allowed to move. And on the first turn, you roll a six sided dice and whatever number you roll, that's how many of these units can move. Well, I rolled a stinking one and that guy moved. And for the first two turns for the allies, you roll a dice for each of the armies. Um, you got 18th, and, or I don't know if they're armies or cores. I think they're cores. 18th and the third, and then they get to move whatever the dice roll is for each one of those cores is uh, how many units they can move. And then on the second turn, you do it again, and you add one to the die roll. Reinforcements came in on turn two. They don't count towards that. They just move. Now, you've got an interesting movement thing in this game. You have two movement segments for each, each uh, side. You have a first and a second. All right, so the first one... They can move into zone of controls. They can leave zone of controls, okay? The second movement phase, any unit that you did not move uh, and starts the, and the unit starts not in a zone of control, they can move, and they can move double their movement points as long as they never enter an enemy zone of control. So it's kind of a way to play catch up with your second line units or to have breakthroughs. Uh, there's air power in this game. You know, you have your typical air interdiction, um, ground attack, and then you have like a barrage or, you know, like they're, uh, uh, I don't know, they're like an artillery thing that you can use. So there's like, there's like three stages to it. I, I haven't got to it yet because they don't start until this next turn, turn three. And both sides have them. I think the Germans have one more than the, than the uh, Allies. Um, you have gas in this game too, um, where your artillery can fire persistent gas and then the gas will stay in its hex. And then at the end of each game turn, you roll to see if it persists into the next game turn. And what it does is it affects, uh, like the, the six hexes around wherever it is. Um, it has some effects to it. I don't know why you'd walk through it, but then again, if you were in it when it landed, you probably have to get out of it. All right. So victory conditions, um, might explain why you have these big movement phases. So this red line here down the middle of the map, the Germans, I think it's one victory point for every unit that's not isolated that crosses this line, okay? Going from here across this line, all right? And for the moment, it looks like it ought to be pretty routine. The second victory condition is for exiting the map and not being isolated at the moment they exit. All right, and I think that's three per unit. Three per step, or let me see here. It is, next page, no, yes. Yes, so it's, uh, at the end of the game, German player receives three victory points for each of his units that has exited the map, okay. Uh, end of the game, the German player loses one victory point from his total for each allied unit that occupies a field work or redoubt or wire hex. So you see the blue barbed wire, all right? Uh, you see the red thing there, that's a field work, okay? All right, and then you see these up here, these are the redoubts. Makes you think of Borodina. A Borodino, as somebody I heard say. All right, so if any allied units occupy any of those, they, the Germans will lose one victory point per allied unit. Uh, let's see, and at the end of the game, the German player loses one victory point for each of his divisions that has been removed from the map due to combat loss and replaced with a regimental replacement. So, uh, well, the Germans don't even have any regimental replacements. Hold on. Yeah, well, I guess these, yeah, these guys are right here. So if any one of these big old units over here gets reduced uh, down to all regiments, then that's gonna that's gonna affect them. Haven't had that happen yet. Um, not sure if it will. As big as these units are, so actually that might explain also covering the strength of these German units, these Stalin troops, huh? So I guess these units over here, they they just weren't converted. They're just regular infantry. They put them all together. It makes one of them stormtroop units. So World War One, 1918, the German offensive, um, San Quentin, San Quentin. One of you French people out there, or somebody speaks French, pronounce that for me. So the Kaiser's Battle SPI. Uh, what year did I say it was again? 1980. Pretty good looking game for November, December 1980. Um, 
you know, not overly fancy, but it's got enough features on it. You know, you've got artillery in this game too. You've got regular field artillery and then you've got heavy. Now, I found this kind of interesting. The heavy artillery can hit any target hex on the map. And there aren't artillery units, you just have points. And you get a lot of them, but it takes a lot to affect anything. But they can hit any target hex on the map. And you also have observation rules, which will come into effect now starting with turn three. And you have, that's all, oh, that's what the, uh, the third one the planes can do. They can do ground attack, interdiction, or observation. And then, of course, you have observation with units. Um, just one of those things, you've got to be able to see your target to hit it. And there's like a six hex distance from a hilltop on a clear clear weather day and three on a mist day and then there's none on a fog day you can't can't use it at all so i'll get to use airplanes on this turn you can see the record chart there um, first two turns are automatically fog then you start rolling for weather and your little blue bar and your red bar at the bottom there that's the artillery strengths and the air force strength air power strengths that you get all right so you got to keep those in mind um allies don't uh Am I missing something here? No, that's right. They get eight field artillery and six heavy. Yeah. All right. All right, so that's turn one and two I've played. It's been in fog. Like I said, not a boatload of counters here. There's the, uh, there's the allied losses so far. Kind of devastating, isn't it? And I went ahead. The pages of the rule book's only six or seven pages long, but I printed out. I made a sequence of play. So if anybody wants this, I've got this in a PDF format, so you can just print that off just like that. You know, just send me a... Put a note in the comments, and uh, uh, we'll have to get an email address to send it to, I guess. We'll figure, it, we'll figure it out if you need it. And then I printed off the last page in the book so I could have these charts because they're not on the map. So that I have these charts right here, plus the, uh, the victory conditions are right there, too. All right. So, so far, I'm enjoying this. This, one's a, this one looks like it plays pretty smooth. Probably shouldn't take long to play this. Um, this is just sort of a little side break. But plus, like I say, it's one of these things that I... Nobody's done a review for it, and I wanted to get it done and so that y'all could see it. And uh, we got a review on it. Um, looks pretty interesting. I'll let you know how it turns out. I'll keep you up there after a couple turns. All right, you know the routine. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. Uh, give it a thumbs down if you don't like it, and tell me what it is you don't like. Uh, subscribe, smack that bell if you want to keep updated with everything I do. All right, let's get this posted. Talk to y'all soon.